Hello, I'm calling from the trip. I'd like to confirm a call. Get in around in two hours. Can you cut my deadline? How much money was involved? Was it over a thousand dollars? Was it over ten thousand Sacramento. I got the piece you filed. I was just amazed that you didn't have any first-person interviews. Oh, you're shorthanded up there. Well, yeah, we are here, too. You want another reporter? I'll ask Lou uh, just as soon as he gets back. So you go. Yeah, I'll come on very strong. Right, Bert. Let me have it. When did they take off? Yeah. What was the name of that airline again? Charter? Get a copy of the flight plan. It should all be on there. Yeah. Time and substance of last radio contact? Stay on it. It's that Tedesco High School basketball team. The kids have just won the state championship. Their flight back from San Diego is more than an hour overdue. No contact? Not since Stockton. Get somebody on it. Check back with sports. Get all the articles on the Tedesca team. The uh, names of the players, coaches. Yeah, they should have some art we can use, too. I wonder how big a town uh, Tedesca is. It's small, about 4,000 people. I've never heard of it. It's the most famous speed trap in Central California. You go 31 miles an hour through that town, you get hit with a $25 fine. Can we spare someone from Sacramento to go down? Have you got the stomach to call Bert back and ask him to send somebody to Tedesca? Not really. I'll let you do it. Vivian, it's Lou. Listen, can you call Danny Feldman at Van Nuys and see if he can fly someone up to Tedesca? It's probably a county airport. He'll know. Yeah, right now. I'll sign it and you make out the voucher. All right. Billy? I want Animal to go too. Call him, will you? I was just leaving. That's right, you're going to Tedesca. Tedesca? Their high school basketball team just won the state championship and was headed home on a charter flight. Oh, don't tell me. Overdue. I'm trying to get you up there as fast as I can. Well, let's see. I can run home now, get some of my stuff together. City desk. Great, Vivian. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Perfect, perfect. Uh, hangar B. Gotcha. All right, they'll be there in half an hour. Right. Hangar B, Van Nuys Airport. What's up? You got us a ride? You're in luck. Somebody's ferrying an executive plane up to Portland. They'll set you down at the county airport. Great. Lou, can I go home first? You don't have time. Well, what am I going to do for clothes? If we're only going to be gone two or three days. Why do you need clothes? Buy what you need up there and put it on your expense account. Terrific. I hope the feed store has a dress department. Ow! I think I better go check with the dispatcher. Yeah. Maybe I ought to get some shots. Let me talk to the dispatcher. He's going to give us the word in a few minutes. Boy, I guess I'm going to have to go talk to these people. Meet you later.
to bother you at a time like this, but I'm from the Los Angeles Tribune. Do you have someone on the plane? Yeah, our boy. What is his name? Christopher, Christopher Dawkins. Don't you suppose if the plane had crashed, we'd have heard something by now? Well, I think so. Uh, how old is Christopher? He's just 16. Thank you. Hi, I'm with the Los Angeles Tribune. No kidding. Uh, did either of you know someone on the plane? I used to go out with Peter Schiff's dad. You did not. Well, we didn't go out at night or anything, but, you know, we used to hang out a lot together. I just can't believe this is happening. Look, Sandra, it's gonna be okay. I know it. I just know it will. Was there a big crowd here to meet the plane? Really? Any members of the press, Sheriff Burkhart will meet you in the main waiting room. I gotta go. I'll catch you girls later. Great. Okay, people. Uh, excuse me, Sheriff Burkhart. Does your name have a D before the T? All that's in the release we're putting out. Uh, yes. DT. Uh, all right, now let me run this down for you. Trans Sierra Charter Flight DC-3 departed San Diego at 8.12 this morning. Carrying a flight crew of three, the Tedesca basketball team, coaching staff of two, two student managers, and two alumni. The plane has been presumed missing since 2.43 p.m. Now, given the range of the aircraft and the amount of fuel on board, the plane has to be down. However, that does not preclude the possibility of a successful emergency landing. Uh, Ted, pass out those. Uh, oh, right. Here, give me one. All right, now, uh, all the names are right here on this list. Thank you, Ted. Sheriff. The plane had to be equipped with an ELT. Haven't you picked up any signals yet? ELT? Yeah, that's an emergency locator transmitter. When a plane is down, the ELT gives off a signal, if it's operating. Well, why wouldn't it be operating? Well, if the plane exploded in midair. Uh, I don't see anything about the two alumni here. Do you have any identification? Uh, we're checking that out. Now, we'll be working out of my office in downtown Tedesca. That's 23 miles from here. Is there a road from here to Tedesca? Yes, sir. We have a road, and a stoplight, and telephone lines, and several flush toilets. Now, like everybody else in Tedesca, I know these boys, their coaches. I know their families personally. If you need information, come to me. If I don't have it, I'll get it for you. But don't badger the families, please. That's all. Patty Hearst? No, Billy Newman. No, I mean, you covered Patty Hearst for your paper. No. Lettuce strike, maybe? Could have been. Matt Kessler. Oh, right, right. Are you still with the Argonian? Oh, no, I left there, let's see, almost uh, two years ago. Uh, I'm up in Denver now. For the Times? Yeah. Yeah, I just came down. My ears haven't popped yet. <laughs> Wasn't your paper just bought out by the McFarland chain? Almost six months ago. All right. Yeah, operator? Collect call from Matt Kessler for Mr. Simmons. You're still with the Trib, aren't you? Yeah. Word has it McFarland's buying your paper, too. Huh. We're going to be stable mates. Love the metaphor. Yeah, operator, this is Collect from Billy Newman. Get me editorial, Lou Grant. OK, is that all they gave you? What else? Okay, fine. I'll put Milton on. You can dictate to him. Is there a number where you're going to be staying? Well, when you find a place, call in. I may be wanting to get a hold of you. Uh, just a second, Lou. Uh, I, I ran into a guy up here who told me that the Trib might be sold to the McFarland chain. The Trib? How ridiculous. Uh, somebody's putting you on. Who told you that? Matt Kessler. He's up here now. He works for them. Billy. On every paper I've ever worked, there's been a rumor every two weeks that it's up for sale. There's nothing to it. I'll talk to you later. Milt, pick up 23. It's Billy and Tedesco. Charlie, 
Have you heard anything about Mrs. Pinchon selling the paper? Nothing to it. Lou, how long have you been in the newspaper business? Every two weeks, somebody says the paper you're on is for sale. But if you hear anything more, let me know. Billy, we lucked out. Every motel room in the county is booked. But, but you got us adjoining pub tents. How about a private house? One block, one, from the Todeska Sheriff Station? All to ourselves? No, with him. About you. How nice. Lou heard a wild rule. It's not true. Dr. Kissinger and I are just good friends. So, it's about the paper. You'd never sell. We know that. Billy Newman heard that the McFarland chain was going to buy the trip. It's nothing to it. I've never even heard from them. Not since their initial feeler, anyway. You see? Say, could Patty get you another piece of pie or something? Uh, the coffee's fine, oh. thanks. Uh, Fred, are, are you there? Hmm. Oh, how about some of Patty's homemade soup, Miss Newman? Oh, don't go to any trouble. Oh, it's no trouble. I'll just take it out of my freezer and pop it in my microwave here. Well, listen, I'm going to take Clay Jr. and run on over to Stevenson's. They've been taking this kind of hard. Operator, great. Yes, this is Collect, Billy Newman. Listen, I had to leave without any clothes, and I need to buy a few things. Where do you get your clothes? Fresh now. Nothing closer? Well, all the really chic stores are in Fresno. <gasps> Lou! Hey, Billy, where are you calling from? Area code 311-555-6431. Animal found us this great place to stay in an old house up here. I'm calling you from the kitchen. Yeah? Big old stove, big kettle of soup simmering, gray-haired lady in apron. <laughs> hey, does the phone have a crank on it? How did you know? Hey. I called because I wanted to bounce something off you. Go ahead. Okay. Uh, the emergency locator transmitter on the plane didn't go off. If it had crashed, chances are it would have. Right. Uh, second. I heard the uh, sheriff talking to somebody on the phone. He called him Mr. Shane Deanst. Yeah? Isn't Bob Shane Deanst the head of the FBI for the Los Angeles division? Yeah. yeah. Why would they call the FBI in on a plane crash? Unless the plane didn't crash. Exactly. What does that sound like to you? Hijack? That's what I was thinking. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and Charlie. What's the latest on Stesca? We had to do some shuffling. How's that Rossi and Castillo up there? What for? Well, Billy thinks it might not be a crash. Uh, she thinks there's a possibility of a hijacking. Possibility? You sent two guys up there? Don't you think that's overreacting? Maybe, but we underreacted to the oil spill. The Times just took that right away from us. Yeah, but two guys? Look. The way I see it, we got there first. We got a beat on the competition. We ought to go for it. If it's a hijacking, where are they? There are a half dozen abandoned World War II strips around there. You could land in one of those places and hide the plane. Who are the hijackers? The two guys who were on board who said they were alumni haven't been identified. And Billy thinks the FBI's been called in. Charlie, it's a good bet. OK, OK, I'm behind you 100%. As long as you're right. What I think you ought to do, Reuben, is cover the charter company. If the hijack angle does break, the FBI will be watching everybody who ever worked for that airline. Let's get situated first. Don't worry, will you? I'll have Billy take care of that. Talk about your urban sprawl. Maybe if we greased our bodies, we could get a few more people in here. Oh, 
Okay. Now, there's been a lot of wild rumors flying around here. I know I've heard a few doozies. <laughs> so here's the poop. At 6.25, this... At 6.25 this morning, a call came in saying the Trans Sierra DC-3 had been hijacked. The crew and members... Of, now, now, hold it. Hold it. You want to hear this or don't you? The call said all members of the team, the coaches, and the flight crew are safe. The hijackers are demanding a half million dollars. Now, the call came to Mr. Richard Schultz, who's standing right here beside me. Mr. Schultz will answer any questions. Rick? What about the FBI? Have they been called in? They're already here. Sheriff, I think that was meant for you. They're already here. Are you sure this isn't just a prank? What do you mean a prank? Was that meant for me? What do you mean a prank? Some sicko just trying to make some money off an unfortunate disaster. We don't think that is the case. Why do you think they contacted Mr. Schultz? Well, Mr. Schultz is a very active member of this community. He helped raise over half a million dollars for our new gymnasium. He's a very prominent businessman. He's the owner of the biggest new car dealership in town. He's head of the Kiwanis, head of the Rotary. Sheriff, you forgot to mention the John Birch Society and the ACLU. <laughs> uh, nothing's been said about the two men who were identified previously as alumni. Do you have their names yet? Well, when they picked up their tickets, they gave their names as William Call and Anthony Ferris. That's with an A. Hey, we checked back over the high school records for 20 years. There's no mention made of either one of them. We're assuming they are the hijackers. Do you know when you'll be contacted again? What they said is soon. I don't mind telling you that McFarland Newspapers is very impressed with the Los Angeles Tribune. It's well staffed, well edited, responsible but lively. It's just the kind of newspaper we'd like to go into partnership with. Those are hardly fighting words, Mr. Richardson. When you say go into partnership, isn't that just a polite way of saying you buy somebody out? No, not at all. See, to buy someone out implies a certain change of hands. Our intention, on the contrary, is not to disturb the editorial operation. You keep doing what you do so well, and we'll help you do it better. What I mean is an infusion of capital into the paper. How do you see that money being spent? You'll be able to augment your staff, update and complete the automation of your printing plant, and reward the people who are doing a good job with the kind of compensation they deserve. Sounds very interesting. What do we have to give up to get all these nice things? What if the McFarland editorial policy doesn't agree with ours? McFarland Newspapers does not impose an editorial policy on its partners. You see, the Tribune has taken positions on occasion that have cost us thousands of lines of advertising. We're aware of that. And we've made our share of mistakes. That must have been before my time. None of these things frighten us. Well, listen, Mrs. Pinchon. I don't expect you to say yes right away. It's a big step. I'd like you to check us out as thoroughly as we investigated you. We will. I take that to mean you're interested? Let's just say our curiosity is piqued. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and &E. Joe Rossi, Los Angeles Tribune. Yeah, how you doing, Joe? Okay, how's it coming? You happy with the numbers? All that? Well, it's just the cash. My dealership put up almost half of that, you know, to kind of prime the pump. What about the rest? Well, we're waiting to hear from the bank. You know, the parents and the relatives have put up their homes, their cars, almost everything they own. And we don't have the figures on that yet. But maybe when people read your story, they'll want to contribute, too. Yeah, well, they might. Let me ask you, uh, do people know if it's tax deductible? Well, a couple have asked. What's the answer? Well, I'm saying yes, but don't quote me. Thank you. Excuse me, Joe.
No, no, no. I, I told you this before. The agency can't make any firm promise. No, that's against policy. Yeah, well, we are investigating that area. All right. Okay, I'll check with you later. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> Joe Rossi, Los Angeles Tribune. I wonder if we could talk about the case. Hey, that's what I'm here for. Marty Niles. I'm an agent. I know. I, I heard. Uh, how many guys do you have up here? Just me. Isn't that unusual for the FBI to send only one guy on a hijacking? FBI? Yeah. I'm not with the FBI. I'm a CTM. I'm a literary agent. Literary? Yeah. This could be a wonderful property here. Has all the ingredients of a terrific movie of the week. High concept, lots of jeopardy, youth. No sex in it yet, but who knows? Yeah, terrific. These phones are for the working press. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Come here, come here, come here. Come here. I think I could use you. No, I don't think so. No, no, really. I have seen your byline, Joe. I really respect your work. Now, once I make a deal with everybody here, then we can talk. Ah, you'd have to knock out a paperback in two weeks. That be a problem? Doesn't it make any difference to you how this all turns out? Nah, not really. We got a smash either way. Hey, here's the rest of our guys. Hey, Rossi, Ruben, you made it. Hey, Animal, hi, Billy. This is terrific. This local car dealer started this whole marathon fundraiser. We know, Rossi. We've been here for 25 hours. Has anyone thought to check out this Schultz character? Could be a cute little sidebar. Well, now that the foot soldiers have arrived, maybe we'll have somebody to do that. What's that supposed to mean, foot soldiers? It just means we need some help. Look, if this thing is going to work, everyone has to be clear on who's doing what. No duplication, okay? Absolutely. Now, we need somebody to check out the charter flight company. I'll take it. What are you going to take, Billy? I'll take the sheriff and the FBI people. Wait a second. That's the main story. That's right. I was here first. It's mine. Look, Lou didn't send me up here to interview the president of the Booster Club. I'll tell you what. You take the sheriff, I'll take the FBI. No, they're mine. Both of them. But you and Reuben can have everything else. Come on, animal. Welcome to Tedesca. Did you get through to Lou yet? No, all the lines were busy. They're gonna call back. Oh, smells good? Mm. Billy, I got over to Fresno today and, well, I thought you might be busy, so... I picked up an outfit for you. I'll go get it. Can you watch these chaps? Sure. These people are so sweet, opening up their house to us like this. Yeah, Mr. Starks gave Rossi and me his other car. Nice, huh? They're really putting themselves out. You know, when this is all over, we should get them something special, something for the house. Now, don't you tell. I think they got everything. Billy. I hope you like this. I had to guess on the side. Are you kidding? Mm -hmm. This is just great. Oh, I, uh, I never owned a midi dress before. Well, I thought you are probably sick of pants, and this you can wear anywhere. Even on a boat. Listen, I got you some underwear. Are there little hangers on those, too? I'll be over at the sheriff's office. Mm -hmm. Remember, Billy, all the clothes you buy up here belong to the Tribune. You're going to have to turn that in when you get back. Can you see Mrs. Pinchon in this? Well, <laughs> I knew we had it out in the garage somewhere. I can just roll this in the room with Buddy and Clay Jr. Well, let's see now. Who's going to be sleeping on this? Um, Rossi. Loves kids. Uh -huh. Everybody getting enough to eat? Now, we insist on paying you. Oh. No, 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 really. You have put yourself out so much for us. It isn't fair that we don't chip in. Besides, the paper's going to pay for all of this. Mm. Well, in, in, in that case, I guess we could just say, oh, um, to $15 uh, for each of you. Is that fair? Yeah. Uh -huh. Yeah, sure, that's fair. And then there's the food. We could say $25 a piece a day. Is that okay? Is, is that all right? I mean, I just want to be fair. Is that fair? Uh, yeah, yeah, uh, sure. And, uh, Patty was nice enough to buy me a dress and some underwear. Right. Forty-eight ninety-three. I got that down. <laughs> Hold it, Rossi. If you're calling the trip, I've already got a call in to them. Besides, what are you doing here? We are not supposed to all be here at once. Then leave. I just got some terrific stuff from the sheriff. What? The sheriff is mine. I know, Billy, I know. I'm only supposed to be handling farm folk, car dealers, and other fascinating sidebars. But I just happened to be in the car with Burkhart, and he happened to tell me some terrific stuff. How did you just happen to be in the car with Burkhart? Hello, Lou? Hello, Billy? Yeah, yeah, I'm really glad I got you. Uh, 
Hold on a, a second while I get my notes. Hello, Lou. Yeah, Brossy. Yeah, pretty good. Listen, I'm ready to dictate. I got some stuff about the sheriff up here. It's a great character. Former peddler of a wrist wrestling champion who went back to college at the age of 50 and got a degree in criminology. Get her off and get off of there. Ow! Lou! Rossi! Give me the phone! Billy! Finish, okay? Who am I talking to now? I can't talk to both of you. One of you is going to have to... Fred and Ginger at it again. Give me, your phone, nail. give me the phone! Rossi, give her the phone. Neil, give me the phone. You don't be so... Look! Childish, what are you... Rossi! Move! Hey! Getting out of hand. Somebody's going to have to go up there and straighten things out. Lou? Ow! Ow! Come on, Billy! I need that, okay? Hello, Lou. Is that you? The second message from the kidnappers just came in. A half million bucks by midnight tomorrow. That's the deadline. Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and Dry heat. Heat is heat. Over 90, I don't care if it's wet or dry. It all stinks. Uh, excuse me, Ruby. Have you seen Rossi? I think he's over at the sheriff's office. He's not supposed to be at the sheriff's office. I'm supposed to be at the sheriff's office. Well, then why aren't you? Because I found something really good and I can't follow up on it myself. Rossi? Rossi. What is it, Commodore? This might make kind of an interesting angle. John Fielding. Yeah, I know. He looks 47 miles out of town. You want me to have a nice little chat with him? What is he, president of the science club, the 4-H? He plays on the basketball team, and he wasn't able to make the trip. Mononucleosis. It's not for me. I can't spell it. Rossi, I'm only trying to help. Guess what? I don't need any help. I can find my own stories. Yes, but they're usually with my people. How you doing? You're on my list of writers I want to talk to. Who's that? An agent. FBI? What other kind of agents are there? Rossi, then you keep away from him. He's mine. Be my guest. So you tell me where most of this money has come from. Excuse me. Oh, yeah, sure. I'm trying to track down the plane. I've got a contact in the Air National Guard and a list of every airfield, new, old, and abandoned with a hundred mile radius. Now I'm thinking of renting a chopper and doing some surveillance in the air. Hey, I don't know, Rossi. Charlie Hume wasn't too happy about our paying 25 bucks a day for that car. Rossi. That was really lousy. What? 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 You told me that creep was with the FBI. No, I didn't. You said FBI. I said, what other kind of agents are there? He's one of the other kind. Someday, you're going to need me, Rossi. Someday, I'm going to be standing between you and a big story. And you're going to say to me, Billy, I need some help. And I'm going to say, not a chance, Buster. Gee, Billy. You know, you've got to recognize that we work for the same newspaper. We should cooperate. I mean, we're all part of the same team. Then cooperate with me. Stay out of my way. Hello. I'm with the Los Angeles Tribune's Arbitration and Counseling Service. Hi, Art. Well, I didn't know you were coming. Believe me, I tried not to. But here I am. Where's Casillo? He's over here. I'll get him. I think we ought to get on him about how he looks. I mean, he represents photographers. It's a reflection on all of us. They see a guy like that coming in, and they think we're all a bunch of beatniks. Now, you see? Billy knows how to dress. Thanks, Si. Uh, listen, I'm really glad you're here. Maybe you can keep Rossi out of my hair. I will. Oh, Billy, you're covering the sheriff, right? Yes, and the FBI. Okay, I want you at the sheriff's office. Oh, Art, it's really boring down there. There's nothing happening now. Nevertheless. Boy, is it good you're here, Donovan. She's trying to send me on some rinky-dink little interview with a member of the basketball team who didn't make the trip. You mean there's a member of the team who didn't make the trip? I like it. You want to try one, John? Nah, I better not. The doctor's really against me doing any physical activity at all. Yeah. Look, no matter what happens, didn't you feel at the time you're getting the short end of the stick? What do you mean? 
Well, you must have been pretty disappointed not being able to go to San Diego for the championships. Uh, yeah, really. It's funny. I was never one of the guys, you know. I mean, I only made the team this year. Uh, my sophomore, junior years, I was kind of a klutz. And now that I'm a senior, I finally made the team. And uh, it really felt kind of good. Yeah, so then you came down with mono, the doctor wouldn't let you go, right? Yeah. I know the rest of the guys are really in danger. And who knows, maybe they won't even come back. But they probably will. And they'll be closer together than ever. This will just be another time that I was left on the outside. Does that sound terrible? Now, the kidnapper's instructions to Mr. Schultz were to keep the police out of it. So we're staying out. Okay, okay, that's the official stance. Now, what are you really doing? We're staying out. So there's no reason for you to hang around here any longer. As soon as we come up with something substantial, we'll let you in on it. Sure. Oh, 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 oh. Hi. Hi. Mind if I uh, park here for a while? No, wherever. That's a pretty dress. Thank you. My daughter has one like that. She's six? Eight. Oh. Well, you were right about the kidnap story, Lou. How much stroking do you want? Keep going. I'll tell you when to stop. When accounting gets the travel vouchers and six expense accounts, you may not be such a hero. You didn't have to stop that sound. Yeah, you know, speaking of expenses, I called Joe Morrison. You remember Joe? He worked on the news when we were on the free press. Where is he? How's he doing? Oh, he's doing great. He said to send you a friendly curse. Mm -hmm. He, uh, he's in Augusta working for McFarland. Hmm. To each his own. Lou, he raves about it. Great pay and pension. They bumped the editorial budget up 20%, and they've got a profit-sharing plan. And he's going to Hong Kong. Maybe they're softening him up. Lou, did you know Kelly Pierce or Marty Rasco? Kelly, I nodded to. Yeah, well, they're both editors on McFarland Papers. Best situation they ever had, that's what they tell me. Three guys, a very small sample. So far, they've had no interference. You sound like you're sold. No, not really. It's just that I can't find anything negative about him. What am I going to tell Mrs. Pinchon? You can always lie. Jeez, it's hot. Where's Castillo? Oh, uh, phone lines were overloaded, so he went up to Sacramento to file our stories with L.A. Yeah, we know. We sent a bunch of pictures with him to put on the wire. Uh, do you know in what esteem the American people regard the press, uh, according to recent polls? We are either below lawyers and above used car salesmen, or below used car salesmen and above lawyers. And why do you think that is? It's because of the way I dress, right? Well, you could neaten up a little, Dennis. Uh, I, I, it's our image. A lot of us care about what people think of us. Uh, a lot of us are family men. Hey, I'm a family man myself. I have a mother and a father. Oh. oh, Mr. Donovan, I just wanted to bring you up to date on your bills. Oh, fine. Animal, I thought you said the cars were $25 a day. Yeah, that's right. Well, I was forced to raise it to 35 Forced? Oh, well, you see, it's my neighbor, George Bundy. Now, you see, he's getting 35 for his cars from the TV people, and he said if I only charged 25 it would make it seem like he was gouging. Uh -huh. Well, you tell him that you're charging us 40 We'll back you up. Oh. Well, I couldn't lie to George. Yeah? Norma, is the sheriff there? I've got to talk to him. Uh, no. Well, let me give you this, okay? This can't go out on the radio band. 
We're out here where we've got the plane under surveillance. Yeah. If those guys are going to come back, we may need some extra backup. Ed is at Matthews Point waiting for him. You got that, Norma? Uh-huh. Norma? Uh... Is this Norma? Hold on. It's for you. Yeah, Rutledge here. Uh-huh. How long ago? Oh, miss! Miss! You want to hold it right there? Lou Grant will continue in a moment here on a and I know what you just heard on the phone. And it's more than anyone's supposed to know at this time. I know you found the plane and that it's under surveillance. And I'd appreciate it if you'd sit on it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to order you to stop time. Wait a sport. minute, wait a minute. You can't order me not to report that. It's funny, I thought I could. But let me put it this way. If you tell anybody what you know at this time, you could be endangering the lives of those boys. Lou? No, 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 there's nothing the matter. Yeah, I, I know. Donovan called that in. We're clearing everything through him. I figure it's better that way. Donovan says that they've raised the money and they're making the drop soon. Yeah. Uh, listen, Lou, uh, let me ask you a hypothetical question. Suppose I have some information that nobody else has except the police. And, but it's the kind of information which might, if it got out, interfere with the uh, police effort up here. I think I should sit on it. You're right. But that kind of thing, don't even tell me. Yeah, Lou, thanks. Uh, uh, Billy, off the record. What do you know? Good night, Lou. Some backpackers up near Dewey Lake came upon an abandoned mine shaft. Preliminary indications are that all the boys on the basketball team, the coaches, and the flight crew were, for a time, held prisoner there. Ah, this thing gets better and better, doesn't it? Now, before you all jump in your vehicles and head up there, I might tell you that the whole mine is currently cordoned off and will be off limits until the lab technicians finish. And how long is that going to be? It'll take two hours, at least. How far is it to Dewey Lake? It'll take you about 50 minutes to get there. 50 minutes. <laughs> We gotta get somebody up there fast. You know, I bet that abandoned mine shaft will answer a lot of questions. Would I love to get up there and check it out? I'll take it. What are you talking about? Look, you took the FBI and the sheriffs. You said I could have everything else. Well, that mine shaft belongs to me. <sighs> okay, okay. It's yours. Okay, Donovan? Okay. Okay. See you. Come on, Sai. Why'd you give in so easily? He wanted the shaft, I gave him the shaft. I think you did. Okay, that includes the kids, the coaches, and the flight crew. Great work. Hey, is Billy there? I want to talk to her. Yeah, hang on just a second. Billy, it's Lou. Hi, Lou. Any new developments? Oh, nothing worth mentioning. I'll tell you what you might do. Let the sheriff know that you were holding back. Maybe he'll give you an edge when the story breaks. Knowing this sheriff, I doubt it. Then give it a try. Okay. Thanks. Bye. What was that all about? Lou trying to be intuitive. You know how he gets. Uh, sheriff, I was wondering, could I have a moment with you? Sure, you'll have to walk along with me. I'm in a hurry. Come on. You know, they'll all be rushing up to Dewey Lake now. Unless their choice. But I'm not going up there, and neither are you. No comment. Well, what do you think? Has the press acted responsibly in this case? Not too bad. A few individuals have been very responsible. They'll get the reward in heaven? I don't think I know what you're talking about. Well, for example, if somebody did act responsibly, maybe they should get a minor edge on the competition. Just a little break. That's not my department. You know where to reach me. The independent newspaper is finished. Oh, come on, Adam. What are you talking about, finished? Already over 60% of the dailies in this country are owned by chains. Oh, yeah. 
I mean, they're being bought up at the rate of 50 a year. Pretty soon, 20 chains are going to own them. As long as you can't beat it, the smart move is to try to get picked up by a good chain. McFarland looks good to me. And, Luke, we know that more often than not, the chains have improved the papers that they've bought. And paid a little better, too. See, I think that we have to keep looking at it from Mrs. Pinchon's position. We keep thinking that she's worth millions, but there's very little cash. I mean, most of it is tied up in the building, the presses, the staff, and the reputation of the paper. On top of which, if something were to happen to her, I mean, the inheritance taxes would be enormous. And then her heirs would end up selling or borrowing heavily just to recoup. Well, yeah. it's nice that you guys are so worried about Mrs. Pinchon. What I hate is the idea of this paper selling out. At a hunch you might feel that way. Come on, Adam. You know the people who are buying up these newspapers. They're also in the oil wells, lumber mills, department stores. Don't you sense a certain conflict of interest there? Most of the fellows who run these newspaper chains today are newspaper men themselves. Richardson was an editor for 20 years. That's true today, but what about the next wave? More and more, the guys who are heading up these chains are coming out of business schools, not journalism. Sure. The bottom line, guys. Mm -hmm. Remember the Mankato Courier? Oil. Buddy Little Paper in Minnesota. Right. They were bought up by a chain. And for a long time, the main office left them alone. They dug up a lot of interesting stories. At one time, they exposed a, a crooked car dealership. Terrific piece, wonderful stuff. And then the auto dealers began yanking their ads. Guess what? The main office gave them a call. Told them to lay off. You got it. Yeah. I think she's around here somewhere. Hang on. Billy Newman? Phone. Billy Newman? This is the sheriff. I disguised my voice. How'd I do? Uh, pretty good, I think. Well, let me give you this. We picked up Ferris and Call. You remember them? Yes, I do. Uh, nobody's hurt. Everybody's accounted for. The boys are all okay. Now, we're going up there where they're hid right now. Then we're going to call their parents, so you better get on your horse. That's terrific. Thank you. Uh, eight graphs. Well, I'll do what I can. How's that? Uh, I'll call you later. My city editor, I pitched him this silly little sidebar, and he fell in love with it. I got to go back to the house and get my notes. Just my luck, something big will break while I'm gone. <laughs> Could you let me use the phone? Mom, I gotta get off. Yeah, one of the reporters needs to use the phone. I'll call you back. Yeah, Clay Jr. got over his call. But he's fine. Patty, I'm on deadline. We're on deadline, Mom. Yeah, I'll call you back. Bye. Thanks. Mom doesn't understand about these things. Huh? Get me Lou Grant. Hello, sweetheart. Get me rewrite. The best part is that Billy phoned it in just before our deadline, and we got a full edition jump on every other paper in the state. Good work, gentlemen. Congratulations. Well, we got a couple of lucky bounces. We have some pretty good people up there. Our reports have shown that your city room is your strength. Even though I think you found yourself spread a little thin sometimes. Well, we manage. Uh, that sums up the Tribune, Mr. Richardson. We manage. Oh, that's no reflection on McFarland newspapers. Everything we've heard about you has been very positive. However... Uh-oh. Yes. There is one thing McFarland cannot provide. A paper that has headquarters in Kansas City cannot really care about Los Angeles as much as I do. You see, several times every day, readers call us either... Um, Oh, delighted, or they're angry. They're usually very angry, demanding to talk to the owner. I'm the owner. I take those calls. It's very important that that kind of contact be available to readers, and it wouldn't be if they had to call Kansas City to holler at the boss. And so, for now, I think we're going to have to say no. Even if it means paying the help less. Rossi, can you sort of scrunch in? That agent had a run at me to write a book about the kidnapping. That makes it complete. He asked everyone. Claimed he had exclusive rights. 
He signed the whole team? Nope. Niall said it was all getting too complicated. Besides, he figured the story was the kidnappers, so he signed them. <laughs> Who says crime doesn't pay? <laughs> Less is 10%. Okay, everybody ready? Yeah. Leave a space for me. Yeah. Set the timer. <laughs> That's not funny. He was on welfare and then struck it rich with his first Hellraiser movie. Meet horror writer-director Clive Barker tonight on an all-new biography. Now, a small-town cop's resentment sets up two innocent detectives on manslaughter charges. Police Story is next on a and &E.